Good morning. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church as we begin another week of the Lord's blessings here in God's house. Um, Happy Mother's Day to all of you who are mothers or have mothers, and I think that uh, covers everyone, or maybe a helpful reminder to call your mother today. Um, I know uh, I'll be doing that shortly. Uh, My name is Lana Martin. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace, and it's my privilege to lead worship today along with our other pastor, Pastor Yoon, and Becky on the organ. Um, Let's see, a couple of announcements for this morning. Next week, there is a uh, a bingo game slash lunch that's a fundraiser for our youth group that I hope you'll be able to attend. The week after that, so two Sundays out, um, is a pretty significant uh, day in the, the year here at Grace. It is a voters assembly after the late service that will include our elections of new people serving on boards and officers for the church. Um, There are a lot of new people uh, jumping forward to volunteer for things uh, this year, and the slate of that is posted in the hallway by the drinking fountain if you want to uh, check that out. And uh, of course, it's not too late if you uh, uh, didn't get a chance to jump onto something, uh, you can still do that. Um, We're also going to welcome a couple of new members into our family faith here at Grace on that day, and so a good opportunity to uh, meet them as well. So a lot going on the next couple of weeks. Now today, our theme centers around uh, every year on the fourth Sunday in Easter, we have a day called Good Shepherd Sunday. There are over 500 times in the Bible where uh, we are called sheep and uh, actually the, the word pastor is Latin for shepherd, and so there's a lot of these sheep and shepherd themes that swirl around uh, in the Bible and in our Christian life, and so we mark one day on the calendar to specifically look at that theme and how it relates to us. And so today we're going to uh, see kind of an iconic challenge between Jesus and some of the, the leadership of the Jewish church of the day going back and forth, and Jesus explaining how this relationship works and what it looks like and why it's just kind of a neat picture of how uh, the Lord serves uh, us, his people. Um, With that said, we're going to see uh, a lot of really neat, familiar uh, hymns and readings before us in the service today that wrap around that theme, and it's my hope and prayer that that will be a blessing for you as you start this week. And with that said, I invite you to stand as we open worship with our hymn of invocation.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Please kneel or be seated for a time of confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just like to serve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, glory for holy. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand and share a greeting of peace with one another in joy of our absolution. Hello. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first reading this fourth Sunday of Easter is found in Acts chapter 20. Now from Paul, known as Miletus, sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church to come to him. And when they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I lived among you the whole time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humanity and with tears and with trials that happened to me through the plots of the Jews. How I did not shrink from declaring to you anything that was profitable and teaching you in public and from house to house, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance toward God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I am going to Jerusalem, constrained by the Spirit, not knowing what will happen there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and afflictions await me. But I do not account my life of any value, nor as precious to myself, if only I may finish my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will see my face again. Therefore, I testify you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Pay careful attention to yourselves and to all your flock, in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to care for the church of God, which he obtained from, with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things, to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease day or night to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who sacrificed. I covet no one's silver or gold or apparel. You yourselves know that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those of who were with me. In all things, I have shown you that by working in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is found in Revelations chapter 7. After this, I looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all the tribes and the peoples and the languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders, and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know, And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. 
The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. At that time, the Feast of Dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. <clears throat> the works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe, because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. A couple of years ago, a <clears throat> self-governing system of islands <clears throat> off the coast of Denmark requested Google include them in the Google Street View software. Now, if you're not familiar with that, Google Street View is where you can sit down at a computer, type in just about anywhere in the world into Google, and see at eye level what is around there. And normally, this is made possible by having cars fit with 360-degree cameras on top, and the cars just drive up and down city streets everywhere. The problem with this system of islands was that it wasn't really easily accessible by vehicle. And most of the islands, even if you could get a vehicle onto the island, it would be really tough to get around and include anything of value in the software. But for whatever reason, the residents wanted to make their mark and be included in this way. So their leadership made a proposal to Google, which was accepted, that they take a bunch of sheep and fit them with the 360-degree cameras on top and simply let the sheep wander. And they promised Google that sheep were not smart enough to find their way home and that inevitably they would wander off in little groups and get lost for long enough and far enough that the island would be captured. And it was. And it worked. And so an entire business model to include this small country in this software all centered around the idea that sheep are not very smart. Is that really something? Now, I have no idea how they got all the sheep back from wherever they wandered off to, but I think what this story shows us is that where there's a wool, there's a way. I had to. <laughs> so, sheep are really defenseless animals of low intelligence. When predators come, there's not a lot they can do. They really need the shepherd to help them find food and water and be protected and find a place to sleep. And in fact, if a sheep falls down, it is completely helpless to get itself back on its feet without assistance of the shepherd. Sheep are, in just about every single way, completely dependent on the shepherd. And so... To think about the idea that 500 times in the Bible we are called sheep, it just doesn't feel like a compliment to me very much. I'm not sure, given the animals that God has created all over the world, if that's the one that I would want to be labeled with 500 times. And maybe you're with me. But the thing is, is it actually encapsulates, it captures a really great view of our situation from a spiritual standpoint. When we are burdened with the difficulties of life, when we have sin that we carry with us, there is nothing that we can do except rely on the Savior to get us back on our feet and head on our way. And so, as insulting as it may be, it's a very helpful, beautiful reminder of how we need to lean on our shepherd, Jesus. Let's back up. Our gospel lesson finds Jesus and the disciples walking through the temple. It says they're there for the Feast of Dedication, which we know a little bit better by the name Hanukkah. This was the Hanukkah celebration. And they are in a part of the temple that we don't normally find Jesus in. Normally we see him in what's called the Court of the Gentiles, which were the places where you'd have the biggest crowds. And so it makes sense that for preaching and teaching, he'd want to be around the most people. But here we find him in this place called Solomon's Colonnade. Now Solomon's Colonnade is a great place to be because, as John tells us, it's winter. And Solomon's Colonnade is the part of the temple that would most shield you from the elements. And so that's where they are. And so they are walking along there, and it tells us that the Jews come up to them to question Jesus. And the Jews is a term that's collected for the leadership, and so we are about 
oh, three-ish months away from Jesus' arrest and crucifixion, and so we're at the height of his tension with the religious leadership. And so they come up, and they ask him pretty plainly, tell us if you're the Savior. Actually, they say, how long will you keep us in suspense? Which I think is kind of interesting. You can fairly also translate that statement, how long will you keep us in suspense, in this way. How long will you continue to annoy us? And I got to think that probably it was more the second one than the first one that they are intending here. So this is kind of a, a little bit of a tense exchange that we have going on. And if we look at it at face value, it's pretty smart, actually. They ask Jesus, tell us plainly if you're the Savior. If Jesus says, no, he's not, well then he discredits his movement right there. He loses his followers, he's no longer a difficulty to these religious leaders. And on the other hand, if he says yes, well, then they can charge him with blasphemy right there and stone him to death in the temple. Problem solved just like that, either way. But Jesus doesn't fall for it. Instead, Jesus tells them to look at his words and his actions to find their answer. He has modeled this, he has taught on this, and he goes on to tell them that the problem is, effectively, that they have rejected the idea that he is the Savior, that they would not be counted among his sheep that would know his voice and hear his voice. Now, Now we come back to Jesus labeling himself as effectively the shepherd. In other places, the good shepherd. And as awkward as it may be at face value to be called a sheep, I think there are just as many difficulties in being labeled a shepherd. The role, the occupation, the vocation of a shepherd is not a flattering one. This is one that would have, the shepherds didn't get time off. Let's start there. So just about every minute of every day, they were out in the fields with the sheep. And as we talked about, the sheep depend on them for everything, for medical care, for food, for water, for um, protection from predators that would be looking for easy prey in the sheep. And the sheep would have to scatter to find food, and so keeping your attention far out in every direction would be a stressful difficulty that the shepherds would have to endure. The constant demands on them required that, um, that they not have very good hygiene, for example. It also meant that they were ceremonially unclean almost their entire lives. And so they were not welcome to be a part of the marketplaces and normal society. They couldn't go to the synagogue and the temple like everyone else. They couldn't engage in their faith like everyone else. And so this role, it's really lonely. And so what we have is the life of a shepherd, it's lonely, it's thankless, it's dangerous, it's difficult, it doesn't get a lot of respect, it doesn't pay very well. So why does anyone do it? And maybe a better question for our purposes today, why is this the picture that Jesus uses to talk about our relationship with him? A couple years ago, I read a story from Uganda. They were having a a lot of difficulties with cattle theft over a period of time. And every morning, there was a group of soldiers whose job it was to take the complaints of people who claimed that they had lost livestock overnight and to sort out who actually owned the livestock and get it all back where it belonged. And then they'd do it all over again the next day. It was a really widespread problem. In the story I read, the soldiers were recounting the most interesting day on the job. There was an elderly woman who came and had a complaint that many cattle were stolen from her family land. 
And the soldiers had normal protocol that a person would use to uh, affirm their ownership of the livestock, and this woman couldn't provide any of it. But she was adamant that this was her livestock. And finally, she convinced the soldiers to let her go back among the cattle where they had it uh, sort of detained for the time being. And as soon as she got out there, she started to call the cattle one at a time by name, and every single one came to her. The soldiers said it was the most bizarre day on the job, but maybe the most proof positive, absolute proof of ownership that anyone provided the whole time they worked on this. Her livestock, every single one, knew their name and knew her voice. Beautiful. So, why does a shepherd want to be a shepherd? Well, First of all, because they bond with the sheep. They love the sheep. They are with the sheep who live 12, 13, 14 years, every moment from birth to death, providing for all of their needs. They get incredibly close. As uh, unintelligent as sheep might often be, the couple of things that they always know absolutely is the voice of their shepherd and their own name. And that creates an incredible bond between the shepherd and the sheep. And the biggest reason of all why a shepherd bothers being a shepherd is that's who they are. That's just who they are. Now that is really kind of a beautiful thing when we think about our relationship with the Lord. The Lord Jesus talks about his people, his sheep, knowing his voice. And right there we see that he never had a second thought about coming to earth and living a life of humility and sacrifice for you and for me because that's who he is and that's how much he loved you. And here... We're seeing a picture for this crowd and these disciples about what it really means to be the, the vo- to, for the shepherd to call his sheep and for them to know his voice. Jesus says that that means that he is offering, giving life eternal to his sheep, life that never ends. In our psalm, that's the, the house of the Lord where we dwell forever. And that's what Jesus is teaching to these religious leaders and the disciples and the crowds on this day in Solomon's colonnade. And I think it's particularly interesting that the next time anyone is said to be in Solomon's colonnade in the Bible is the early parts of the book of Acts. Every single day, the apostles, after Jesus' ascension into heaven, they would go to Solomon's colonnade, and they would do the things that Christians do. They would act in the way that the shepherd taught them to. They built the church in his example. So they would go to Solomon's colonnade, and they would proclaim the gospel They would tend to the sick and heal them. They would provide food for the hungry. They would in every way do the things that Christians do. And in that, we see a picture of the impact of the voice of the shepherd on the sheep. Jesus' words this day in Solomon's colonnade and every day throughout his ministry impacted these apostles in a way that their life changed forever, that every waking minute was spent after Jesus was gone back into heaven doing the things that he taught them to do and spreading the message that he taught to them. The voice of the shepherd was living and active and impactful, and it changed who they were forever. And you know what? The same thing is true for you. From the moment the Lord places his name on you and calls you by name in your baptism, The voice of the shepherd is something that you know and recognize and becomes a part of who you are and changes who you are forever. From that point, in times of anxiety or guilt or strife, 
The voice of the shepherd tells you that you are forgiven and you are loved more than you could ever imagine. The voice of the shepherd reminds you that you are never alone. The voice of the shepherd reminds you that you were loved enough that he gave everything for you. And that voice of the shepherd, it goes with us, and it guides us, and it pursues us towards the greener pastures and the still waters. That voice of the shepherd reminds us always that life is ours without end, that he goes with us through this life into the life of the world to come. That voice of the shepherd is one that will echo in our minds and our hearts and through our faith every day forever and ever. And finally, that voice of the shepherd is the one that guides us to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand. We confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Lord Most High, be the dwelling place of your people, for the sake of Jesus, who suffered temptation and death for us. Be our refuge, preserve us from temptation and suffering, and strengthen us in faith. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, in the midst of this life, we encounter many temptations. Fix our eyes on Jesus, who bore temptation and faithfully resisted for us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all, you bestow your riches on all who call upon you. Bless parents with wisdom as they teach their children your ways, that all households may confess with their mouths that Jesus is Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, govern the kingdoms of this world according to your holy and gracious will. Protect authorities from temptation and equip them to curb what is evil and promote what is good. Bless the armed forces of our land who work to bring peace and justice to all. We especially remember Renee, Scott, Dan, Kevin, Rachel, Josh, Michelle, Scott, Thomas, Andrew, Jim, Tim, James, Jonathan, Paul, Stephen, Randall, Chris, Stephen, Evan, Laith, Connor, Paul, and Nathan. Lord, in your mercy. God of all mercy, you answer those who call upon you. Hear our prayers for all who are in need of healing, peace, and restoration, especially Bonnie, Elsie, Sue, Carol, Mike, Don, Tom, Debbie, Marie, Jeannie, Lois, Isaiah, Sarah, Renee, Sarah, Christina, Roy Saylor, the family and friends of Dave. Be with them in their trouble and rescue and heal them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, keep our eyes fixed on your Son, Jesus Christ, who bore our sin. Strengthen us when we are tempted, and teach us to rely upon your word as our defense. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his right, again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-abelling all -abelling sacrifice, his body, and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg your Lord to forgive and renew and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as if be just do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the end of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us to, to you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on us as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand. The true body and true blood of Jesus Christ strengthens and preserves you in true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace and joy. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always through our heart and mind by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace and serve the Lord.